So now we're on part two of the relay adventure. You just sort of start me putting this together. It took about two hours to put together, but it didn't work straight off the bat. I actually shot all of that on a builder's live stream. So if you want to see the full length version, it's like two hours. It's up on my Patreon if you're interested. In the last video, there was that massive relay I had. Well, I've now put that on the wall in the museum next to a couple of ringy bell telephones. So you can either ring the bells on the telephone or test the relay yourself. As you can see, if you push this button, it makes the contact and it lights this lovely orange warm incandescent panel light. I've still got to find a way of displaying this relay box that I think was probably from some sort of university or college or something displaying, you know, like as a display part in a science class. It's got 24 volt input, but I need to probably make a box at the bottom so people can push buttons and instead of having to put your fingers in that. Because if a kid puts their finger in the middle of that solenoid, that's, that's probably the end of your finger off. So you, you don't want that, you don't want that. Also this week I've got LSDJ up and running in the soon to be camera room and stuff. That's where I'm starting to work on now. And hopefully over time there'll be a nice collaborative decent song played on Little Sound DJ which has actually been plugged through a DMG consoleizer which is a Game Boy that has a VGA output. Anyway let's have a closer look at what is going on here. So far this is where the sequencer is at as you can see all of the steps are in. This is the right uh, board, this is the reset board, this is the clock buffer board. Um, all of the wires have been sort of connected together in a, in a sort of way using mini cable ties and stuff to sort of keep it neat and tidy. Uh, the reason I've gone for mini cable ties is because if there is a problem you can quickly snip them off and they're all everything's separate and stranded they're not braided together or anything like that. As you can see the wires bend at the hinge so you know you're not it doesn't get messy when you open it, it opens nice and nice and neatly. Ooh. Aesthetically, I'm really quite happy with it. The wooden enclosure, the clear polycarbonate front and the perf boards. I think it really looks the part. The other reason why I did the wires like this was to make the relays as visible as possible. As you see, the wires actually go through the cracks in the actual board. So they actually line up to these. So all of the relays aren't obscured by like wires going across and this and that and the other. And the only real bits that get in the way are these little orange bits going between these switches. So I'm sending in a clock pulse and as you you can see the incandescent light bulb right here lights up on the clock pulse buffer and you can sort of hear it I'll get the microphone down here the case softens the relay somewhat and it makes them sound quite soft when you open it Like in the breadboard version last week, I can use this to write in a bit. And now when I send in a clock, it's going to send that bit into the uh, the sequential counter. Yeah! Like last time, you can add extra bits in. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Keep on adding them in. Here we go, now we're getting quick. The amazing thing is uh, I've been testing this all week and none of the relays have broken yet. Like the quick ones that are keeping on moving, they're still going. So, you know, like I said in the last video, they may break at some point, but they still haven't broken and they've been going like crazy. In high speed, it does get a little unpredictable and sometimes you do lose steps, which is a bit of a shame. But in a normal speed, like around here, the steps don't really get lost that much. So if you remember from the last video, Q is the output of the step and D is the input of the step. And all you need to do is make one of these for each step and wire the Q directly into the input. By the way, uh, if you're trying to copy this, I did put a diode here. I put it the wrong way around. So if you want to keep a diode here, turn it around. <laughs> just, just, just for, I've just crossed it out because it doesn't even really matter anyway. But if you wire these together, you're able to make a sequence. But if you get a switch and put them between these two, you can break the sequence and you can basically stop it from being a step. So these switches have three functions. The stop one in the middle basically breaks the contact between the uh, output of one step and the input of the next step. So we flick this, we break the contact and what happens is it stops. When you stop it, it actually stops the signal coming from this relay and going into there. So now you can write in a number of bits and they all forget, they just go down the stream. This function is possible with discrete components and it happens in um, numerous amounts of sequences and stuff, but this means that you're able to write in a bit and basically just send it down the stream and make it go doo -doo 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 -doo, and then stop. Let's try and get it quicker. Well, 
well, you get the idea. It gets a bit unpredictable at the end. It always seems to stop at a certain point. So there's obviously a weak point around here. The other thing that these switches do that, uh, you know, a lot of other discrete sequences do is skip steps. So what this does is let's say the output of this uh, step, it, if you flick it over to skip, basically the switch says, this wire, don't send it to here, actually send it over to here. So miss this one, completely miss it. And then what you do is you can, so this is it normal, send it a bit, and now we can skip this step. And now it's only a seven step sequence. You want it to be a six step sequence, let's skip that step as well. Skip this step, skip this step, skip this step, skip this step, skip this step. Skip this step. It's a one step sequence. Skip that one, it's a no step sequence. So this was just a couple of quick implementations on this sequencer because they're very simple. They don't require extra relays. They just require a bit of rerouting via switches. So how you could wire these switches in, for instance, there's a couple of ways of doing it, but you could have the output, this is Q. You have a wire going over to the center of this switch that is on top of step two. And then you have one of the outputs of step two going into the input of that. But then you also have another, this one, it goes way, way into the input of number three and that basically just routes this and skips it and goes over to there and then let's say if this is a three step sequence so you just where's the output of this wires over to the input of this wire this one there pop in a d we drawn that pretty badly but hopefully that makes sense there's just an orange wire that actually connects between the switches this is the skip function it's not actually going back to the relays it's just skipping on the back of the panel I was also toying around with the idea of making it so you can make it go backwards as well, so you can make it ping pong. And this is actually quite simple. Basically, all you need to do is have a relay on each of these that have two poles, one wired to the input and the output of the sequences, and they basically flick between listening to that side or listening to that side. So you're able to bounce it, make it go backwards and forwards uh, relatively simply with just the addition of an extra relay on each of these. It would have been cool, but I just didn't, I just didn't, it didn't, it didn't happen okay. between the writing relay board and the reset relay board, there's a gap. And it would be lovely to fill this with something because the, why not? And then I thought, wouldn't it be cool adding a number display to show which step it was actually on? And thinking about the aesthetic of the actual machine, it wouldn't be right adding just a, you know, a seven segment LED display in there. That would be, uh, it would be a bit naff. It would be a bit disappointing. And this got me thinking what other kind of displays I could potentially put in there to display the number. And there are a couple of obvious choices for this. There are the VFD tubes. These the vacuum fluorescent displays and you can get them in seven segment display types and this would be more than enough to display one to eight and this would be pretty cool this specific tube is an iv11 and it gives off a lovely aqua tone the other rather obvious choice is using a nixie tube Ooh, the nixie tube is an amazing type of tube it gives off a lovely orange glow it's a cold cathode tube you'll see there's a grid on the front that is the anode and then behind it is a bunch of numbers lined up one after the other and these are cathodes if you send 170 volts through the common grid pin and then you touch ground onto any of the other legs you'll get different numbers look at that but we have a little bit of a problem here where are we going to get 170 volts from the relays use 5 volts i don't really want to have to use a voltage booster in the circuit it's sort of cheating these VFD tubes have a similar problem, however, they don't require as high voltage. They need the heater voltage, which was 1.6 volts, and then you also need 30 volts to actually light up each of the displays. So that's not really gonna work either because we've only got five volts. However, there is an option from this era of displays that will, they will work and that is the Numatron. And if you look closely at these ones in the museum display, you'll see that they, they look sort of like Nixie tubes, but they, they aren't quite Nixie tubes. And also at the same time as coming to this conclusion, I actually found this Numatron sitting around as well. I need to thank somebody who actually sent in, funnily enough, both this and a bunch of the panel indicator tubes, the ones that are actually underneath the relay. Uh, I cannot for, for the life of me find the uh, letter that they sent with the actual name uh, 
of who they are, I'm so I'm very sorry, but as well as some quiet please indicators, a long bulb thingy, uh, some rose taps. So thank you very much. And if uh, you are watching this, please let me know because I, I can't find your name anywhere. <laughs> so with that all in mind, I had this Numatron and this Numatron actually made sense. But why does it make sense to use this Numatron over a Nixie tube or a VFD display? Well, the answer is very simple. All we need to do is look at the functioning of a Numatron. So a Numatron looks like a vacuum tube. However, it's got more in common with an incandescent light bulb because what it is is basically a light bulb with filaments in the shape of a seven segment display. All this is actually doing is heating up the actual light filaments inside and they're all shaped like a seven segment display. For instance, if I put eight in there, you'll see that all of them put together actually make an eight. This has a number of advantages over Nixie tubes. Uh, one of them being these last longer, but I don't think that's much of an issue over here because we've got relays that are probably going to burn out way before these things. And the other advantage of Numatrons is they run between three and six volts. So in order for me to light this right now, all I'm doing is I've just wired this into the relay's power supply. So this is going to work without any modification to the power supply. So what I did yesterday on a builder's live stream was uh, take this Numatron. I figured out the pin out of it. Uh, that's right here. So pin one, for instance, is this line. Pin four is this line. And then after that, figured out every single kind of combination required to light each of the numbers. So one requires pins seven and six to light. And what I did then is I built this circuit board. What is below the Numatron is a bunch of diodes. This is called a diode matrix. And um, this basically means that I'm able to select the numbers and the diodes actually isolate each number's choice from each other. If there was no diodes here, each of these selections would actually always just select eight because all of the connections are being made all the time. But with the diodes, imagine diodes as one-way streets. So if I only want to select number one, I can now select number one. If I want to select number two, I can select number two. If I want to select number three, I can select number three. If I want to select number four, five, six, seven, and eight. If you want to watch the full three hour builders live stream from start to finish of me building this and figuring it out, then it's still available over on Patreon and YouTube membership. So if you want that, just check it out. And with all of this, now we can actually wire each of these numbers up to the steps. So when the steps are on, it basically turns the designated number on, on this display. Oh, I'm a plonker. I'm an absolute plonker. Oh no, what am I gonna do? I've just built this upside down because if you notice all the screw terminals are at the top here uh, and yeah, if I put it there, the number's gonna be upside down. I guess I could turn the whole thing upside down. The Feng Shui, the Feng Shui, oh no. How have I done this? I am such a plonker. Okay, well, um, it's just gonna have to, it's just gonna have to do it. I'm just gonna have to live with that. I'm just gonna have to live with it. There's no insulation on these legs, so twisting it around and stuff will be a bit hard. And it's getting on my nerves and I'm not that much of a perfectionist. Oh no, oh no. <laughs> uh, no, it's not gonna work either because, no, I need to make four six and one seven. Two's backwards, that was two backwards. Not happy with that. The thing is, is uh, when it's upside down, the bottom of it is actually shorter than the top, so it makes it look like it's back to front. It just looks wrong, okay? So I'm gonna remove this again, get the heat shrink going, extend the legs again, and just, just do this properly. Oh my God. After a few swear words and coming to terms with being a platinum plonker, I decided to turn the situation around and use it potentially to my advantage. Well, at least that's what I'm telling myself. So I decided to clean up and extend the legs on the Numatron and put it on its own board and mount it to the front of the panel. This way it's not sunk in the back, it's at the foreground of the machine. So it's actually worked out better anyway. And as you can see now, it looks pretty, pretty damn good. <laughs> The funny thing is it isn't finished yet. I haven't actually wired in the potentiometers so I can actually use it for what it's used for. I've been getting far too carried away with just it as a machine in itself. Last night when I finished this, I actually just sat pushing the buttons for about an hour or so, just listening to the clicks. I've got to say it is really quite mesmerizing to the point that like I still haven't finished it because I've just been listening to it too much. So I still can't actually use it with a synthesizer yet. There is one downside to the Numatron and you may have noticed 
in the previous shot. Uh, if there's more than one step going, well, it's selecting more than one number. So this is just, uh, it's, it's fine. It's a bit of fun. So in a traditional single step stream sequence, it works perfectly fine. It's really quite nice looking. But when you add more than one step in, it gets a bit kerfuffy. But at that point, you don't really want to know what number step you're on anyway. So it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. But the first thing in the next video is going to be this, playing the music and just being an overall percussive sequencing thingamajiggy. I'm just going to call it a relay percussive sequencer. Hey, that works better. In the comments of the first video, there was mentions of it being possible to do this with less relays. And yeah, you, you can actually. To be honest, I was thinking uh, of building this uh, down to my thoughts of like how building other sequences that I built in the past using flip-flops and stuff like that, which is how uh, Moog did the sequences and stuff. However, Ken Stone, who makes the CGS DIY synthesizers and documents that stuff he mentions that he's built one in the past and there is a link below to it requiring a couple less relays per step which is based on the way the surge sequences so i'm going to be giving that a try in the next video as well and also looking at this cascading effect instead of the flip-flops just flippy flopping along uh, using different components for instance you can use neon tubes but basically i need to figure out which route to go down do i go down the flip-flop route or do i go down the cascading route and that's what i'm going to look at in the next relay video in other news there is a new diy cosmo format module out and it is the 20 700 20 drums. It's based on traditional organ style 20 drums of old, particularly the rhythm generator. And I've made a sample pack of it and that is available over on Patreon. Anyway, that's it for Clicky McClickety today and I'll play you out with the 2700 module. Ooh.